What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're primarily going to be talking about Scream 7. Just going over an idea I had thinking about Leslie Mocker and how we can incorporate a cult angle in Scream 7 related to Stu Mocker and his comeback. Now before I get into that, I did want to touch on a little tidbit of information about the upcoming Insidious 5 that we thought was going to be titled Fear of the Dark. That was just a working title. It has now been rebranded according to Sony's upcoming release schedule for this year. It's being titled Insidious The Red Door. Now the Red Door title subtitle that title in general i do not like it but it's a movie title it is what it is they want to call it that that's fine i'm not gonna f give you flack for a generic movie title uh as far as what this means obviously we know the red door is one of the most iconic set pieces from this series to date so i think it would indicate obviously with them putting it in the title that we will definitely see the red door once more it will play a lot of importance tying into uh, Dalton's return to the further most likely we will see the reemergence of the lipstick face demon and Dalton's life away at college because we know this is going to be picking up 10 years after that second movie his life away at college is going to be hell on earth just like his childhood was when it comes to this lipstick face demon or Darth, Darth Maul on drugs I've seen is what people like to call the demon in Insidious. But before I go any further and talk about Scream 7, I did want to touch on Rose Byrne's recent comments about the film uh, last month with Collider and how Patrick Wilson kind of was the one who came up with this story angle of going back to the Lamberts. He said that she said that he really wanted to make it about the origin story, about the original cast, about those characters and the effect on the family, then also delve into the classic horror stuff and all of the tropes and all the things the fans love to give the fans what they want too. So it was really cool to reunite with Ty and that was while revisiting that. I got a thrill out of that. It was a lot of fun. So the fact that this was Patrick's idea, since we know this is his directorial debut, means means a means that he definitely had an interest in just going back to this family it is not something that was conceived and he stepped in he was helping i guess along the way with the story as well so what i hope to see is yes of course touching on the trauma of it all and how it's shaped them over the years but of course we also know that we are going to lose a member of the lambert family in the upcoming movie this being josh's mother because of an audition tape that revealed that she would not be amongst the living in this film uh she could die prior to the movie or she could die somewhere midway through and they have a funeral for her we also saw this the set image of them at the at the funeral for them as well so going into in cities five all i hope for is that it is something decent i don't have too many high hopes for it i just hope it's something decent and hopefully a, a step up from the third and fourth movie in some regard and a little bit more on par from those first two films uh so just to dive into Scream 7. Now, Leslie Mocker has been the person I've talked about as our next Ghostface killer for quite some time. It's the person I want. I know some people don't want that. They want Christina Carpenter. However, what I've done is I've considered how I would like to see this play out if a cult were to be involved. I do want to add that for the record, I do not want a cult of killers, but I'm not the one in charge of creative decisions. So what I like to do is examine all of the possibilities, even if it's something that I don't want. If it happens, I would like to like to see it done in a manner in which it is digestible and this this to me would be a way in which i could digest a cult angle so in screen five richie's laptop screen let us know that Stu being alive is a theory in this universe similar to our own real world then in screen six mindy makes a comment about this theory even further to kirby while they are in the shrine location so could screen seven offer more than just little nuggets like the way six and five did could they take us into the full-blown direction of what people think and how they operate and how extreme this stew is a life theory actually is in this world six touched on conspiracy theories and how dangerous they can be but what if leslie decided to target our survivors in a way that would keep her hands clean all the way up until it's time for the reveal and of course the typical monologue that the killers like to give so leslie in my theory again if you haven't watched my previous leslie video i'll leave a link to that in the description leslie is someone who recently found out a shocking secret from christina carpenter christina knew all along what billy and Stu were up to in 96 so leslie blames all of her life struggles since Stu's death on christina and every other survivor who profits or benefits in some capacity off of these tragedies she hates the stab franchise she hates horror in general and hates how the media cherry picks those it will cover from the tragedies so in an effort 
effort to put an end to it all, Leslie goes online, discovers several threads related to her brother's survival, and finds out that these people in this thread believe the Woodsboro survivors know where Stu is, and the only reason Stu is hiding is because they won't allow him to return as long as they are alive. Now, Leslie, taking advantage of their obvious stupidity, inter interacts with them online and establishes herself as a credible person and leader amongst them. She convinces these idiots that their theory is indeed correct and that the survivors know where her brother is. So they do what she says. They attack our survivors dressed up as Ghostface, of course. I will still keep this as a as a uh, a commentary in some capacity on true crime. The backdrop can still be an upcoming Woodsboro true crime series that's going on. And then while they're attacking everybody dressed up again as Ghostface in in recognition of Stu Mocker. This would go on up until we get down to the final act where we only have three of the seven or eight killers in this cult that are left. So only three cult members are left at this point. Leslie will reveal herself amongst the survivors by killing the remaining cult members and betraying the survivors who had no idea who she was. So this would be a callback, of course, to Mrs. Loomis and even what they just did with Ethan in Scream 6. So maybe you can tweak that a bit to make it a little bit more less redundant. But she would betray the cult members, shoot them also revealing herself to be betraying the survivors who had no idea who she was and then she goes over her revenge monologue as usual and ultimately her plan to get away with it would be blaming it on the cult members who believe that Stu was dead that's how i would prefer to see a cult angle executed i would not want to see a cult of killers that have no type of personal grudge against anybody i do not want to see an angle where this cult that you could factor into the story they are just in it because they are out of their minds they have no personal grudge against anybody or anything i do not want to see that i get that some people are sick of it my argument is that this is what this franchise is there's always been some sort of tweaks to it but it's never completely just abandoned abandon that revenge angle there's always been some sort of revenge against somebody in these movies in scream 5 you could argue that the revenge angle was against hollywood in scream 6 it got more to the personal side of things similar to how scream 4 was a little bit more personal scream 3 is a little bit more personal scream 2 and the original scream a little bit more personal the revenge has always been a part of this franchise and i do not think abandoning it completely would go over all that well it could open the door for arguments that you are no longer a screen movie. So why even label it a screen movie? Besides, of course, you just kept Ghostface around. So that is how I could see a cult angle playing out. That is how I would find it to be digestible. I do want to again say that this is not what I would prefer, but this is just how I would do it if it were up to me and I had no other options but to do a cult angle. I would have the cult portrayed as complete idiots with a leader. Let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and there's a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.